Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna be talking about 13F filings. Okay, we're gonna go over what exactly they are and how we can use them in our own investing. And then I'm gonna show you a few different places where we can find the 13F filings. And then I'm gonna show you a few different um, value investors that I like to follow through their 13F filings, okay? This is something I really wanna bring into the channel. So if you'd be interested in seeing more about the 13F filings and that sort of thing, then drop it in the comments below. Um, and this is something, like I said, I really wanna bring in and really start to try and analyze and get a deeper understanding of what these big value time investors we all like to follow, um, you know, some of the decisions that they may be thinking about when they were buying these particular positions within these companies. Um, I really like learning from the best in the game, you know, these value investors, that's really who I really want to focus my investing on moving forward and getting exposure to the US markets. I don't really hold any companies at the moment in the US other than through ETFs. I do have a couple of very small holdings um, with a couple of particular companies that I've learned through these 13F filings. But this is all stuff that I've sort of just been looking at over the last six months. So so yeah, like I said, if you want to see some more moving forward on the channel going into these 13F filings, then drop it in the comments below and uh, it's something I really want to bring into the channel. All right, so a lot of these big value time investors that I've been following over the last six months and reading a lot of their books and whatnot, Monish Prabhai and Guy Spear, um, Dando Investor and the Education of Value Investor, I'll leave some links in the description below to these books there. Great books, I highly recommend them. I've talked about them on the channel before, but I cannot stress enough how great these books are. So definitely get out there and pick up these books at your local bookshop or listen to them on Audible, whatever you want to do, however you want to take in the information, I definitely recommend it. It's worth your time. Um, anyway, a lot of these guys, they all sort of follow off Warren Buffett's investing philosophy, which is to buy good businesses that he understands um, that are below their intrinsic value that's given him a good margin of safety when he buys into these companies, okay? Um, so this is what we're going to be talking about today is the 13F filing, which is basically essentially looking over their shoulder um, over what they've been buying over the last three months, okay? So you're not buying it, you're not getting the information the day that they're buying into these great companies at below intrinsic value and whatnot. Um, so you could actually be looking up to four months out of when they actually picked up the companies, which things could change a lot in four months, especially in the market like it's been this year. There's been ups and downs and violent swings in every which way. So... Bear that in mind if you're wanting to get go down this road and start to understand and start looking into the 13F filings of these big value time investors that we're going to be talking about today. Bear in mind that you are looking in the rearview mirror up to four months old, so the information that you're looking at. But it's still you're looking at you could potentially be looking into some great companies that these guys have signed off as being good investments, okay? But not all of them always work out though, so bear that in mind. Just because Warren Buffett bought something, that doesn't mean it's a signed tick. You don't have to do any research or anything like that. It just gives you some good ideas to things that you want to analyze and do some more research on yourself. If you're struggling for investment ideas, okay, or potential companies to look into a bit further, and if it's in your area of competence and you understand that business, then maybe it's a good investment for you as well. So that's what we're going to be talking about, guys, is how we can use this 13F filing into our own, incorporate it into our own investing style, um, and you know, really sort of almost essentially invest with the best, let's say. Okay guys, so the Securities and Exchange Commission in the US, the SEC, is a regulatory body and an agency that um, regulates the trading of stocks and bonds, and they require that all hedge funds that manage over more than $100 million, that they have to, re every quarter they have to report on any holdings that they've bought and sold over that last quarter, and any put and call options that they also have in place over that last quarter, okay? So every quarter they have to, and then they've got 45 days to file this 13F filing, which is, this is what I'm saying, this is how we can get an indication of what they've been buying and what they've been selling over the last four months essentially, because you've got that extra 45 day buffer from when the quarter ends before they actually have to file the report. So this is a great way to sort of get a good, deeper understanding on what they're currently buying and selling and what they have been over the last four months, which then you can incorporate into your own investing, you start looking at these companies that they've been buying and selling over the last four months. Bear in mind, a lot of these, especially if you're looking at Warren Buffett's, the Berkshire Hathaway's 13F, a lot of these companies he's had in his portfolio for 20, 30 years, okay? So they brought these years ago. Um, so if they may be slightly trimming that position and buying something else, you wanna sort of look at stuff that they're buying and the big big stuff they're buying, not just some small 0.011% or something of their, of the entire portfolio. We wanna look at these big positions that they're trying to acquire. Um, not just with Warren Buffett, but also Manish Prabhai, Guy Spear, and Seth Klarman, all these other big value time investors. Uh, what, you know, look at the bigger positions that they're taking, okay? And then start looking at those companies. This would be the good place to start if you're a bit lost for any ideas on, you know, US-based companies that you wanna start looking into. Then I would recommend looking at these 13F filings and look at their latest holdings, what they're buying, what they're selling, and that sort of thing moving. So just a couple of extra things on the 13F filing there, guys. 
The SEC did come out with a report, I think it was in June or July, that currently every hedge fund that has over 100 million in management, they have to report every quarter on this, uh, their 13F. But they have said that they may push that out to three and a half billion, which will cut out a lot of these good value-based investors that we like to follow through these 13F filings. So that's a little something we need to keep an eye out on um, moving forward. Obviously, Berkshire Hathaway and all the big value time um, hedge funds will still be included in it, but it will cut out Monish Pabai and a few of these other ones that are good to follow as well. So bear that in mind. That may change the whole 13F filing system. I really hope this doesn't come into play, but they're talking about it. So if they're talking about it, there is a chance that this possibly could come into play. Also, it doesn't include any short positions or any investments that are held outside the US generally. I think some, I have seen a few other companies, I think it was a Sequoia fund, they've got um, A2 Milk uh, in their fund, which is a New Zealand company, obviously. Um, so, but they don't have to include uh, a lot of their holdings that are not in the, in the US in their 13F filing. So that's another thing to be aware of. A lot of these companies or hedge funds also have investments outside of the US, especially uh, Monish Pabrai with uh, Dalal Street, um, with his hedge fund, he has a lot of investments in India and I think even possibly some in Japan, possibly. Um, and I think maybe even some in Europe somewhere as well. I'm not 100% sure there. Um, so he's only on, if you look on his 13 year filing, he only has three holdings, I think it was. Um, so definitely, yeah, bear that in mind. This might not be their entire portfolio. This is only just the US based stocks that you're looking at, okay? So just a few little facts there as well around the 13F. A couple of different places you can find these 13F filings online. One being Whale Wisdom. I'll leave a link in the description below. That's the one I like to go to. They have a couple of different options. I just use the free option, but I definitely recommend you jump on there and check out the, um, the different 13F filings that are available on there. I'm gonna give you a couple of different 13F filings to start off with, to start your research on. But this is something that I'm really wanting to bring into the channel. So if you're interested to see some more videos going off on 13F filings and start looking at it and analyzing different companies that some of these big value investors have made, drop it in the comments below. And if I get enough um, traction on it, I definitely will start probably making videos more on this because this is something where my, I just naturally see my investing heading more to US-based companies. So I'm pretty interested in this sort of area myself. So I'd love to start making some more videos on these US-based companies as well, as well as alongside obviously analyzing, studying um, Australian and New Zealand stocks as well. But I also want to sort of start looking at some of these US-based um, companies as well from some of these big value investors that I really look up to and admire some of their investments they've made over their investing careers. And I think that's where I sort of want to start heading more with a lot of my um, equity market investing is more US-based. So yeah, like I said, if you want to see some more videos like this, drop it in the comments below and I'll, and I'll endeavor to make some more videos more around the 13F filings. And yeah, I'm looking forward to the next uh, coming up on the next month. So we'll, we'll see what uh, some of these uh, big value time investors have been buying, buying and selling over the last sort of quarter there. If you're wanting to get into this and start looking over some of these 13 year filings yourself, I highly recommend you jump on and check out Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. That's a great one to start. He's got a number of holdings there. And bear in mind, he has a lot of, has had these holdings for a lot of, many years, let's say. So, um, you know, don't just rip out and buy every single thing that he's had because he's bought these probably 20, 30 years ago at a fraction of the price of what they're selling at today. So bear that in mind. Monish Parade de Lao Street is another great one to start with um, looking at a bit of a look through there. The Dando Investor. If you've not read his book, I highly recommend his book as well. Uh, Guy Spear, who's almost, who is a friend of Monish Parade, also another great one. He runs the Aquamarine Capital Management Fund. Um, he has a slightly bigger, more of a portfolio than what Monish. Monish Parade only has about two or three holdings in his um, his last 13 year filing. Uh, one being SRG and Micron, something to do with microchips or something. Um, I didn't really look too much into both those. I do did did do a bit a lot more research on the SRG because a lot of uh, these big value time investors have been taking up a position with SRG. So that's a company that I've been doing a lot more research on recently. Um, so check out those ones. And then lastly, Seth Klarman, Bell Post Group. Um, he has a bit more of a bigger portfolio. I think he had about 37 or 38 different holdings um, when I last checked. Um, and th this guy's been getting some phenomenal returns over the last sort of, you know, 12 years or so, been sort of averaging around that 20%. So this is another value investor I've only sort of just learned about recently, but I've been starting to follow a lot more of, um, you know, what he's sort of been buying and selling over these last sort of six months or so. So those are the sort of ones that I've been starting to look at. But by all means, I'd love to know what you guys are looking at. If you guys are interested in the 13 year filings, then yeah, definitely drop it in the comments below and I'll do a bit more research on it all and start trying to really analyze some of these US-based companies that the best of the game are investing in. Um, so that pretty much wraps up today, guys. If you enjoyed today's video, guys, hit that like button. 
be much appreciated. You know the drill. And if you want to see some more videos like this moving forward, then hit that subscribe button and you'll be the first to know when the next video drops. All right, guys, we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.